Error boundaries were introduced in React 16 as a way to catch and handle the JavaScript errors that occur in the UI parts of our components. Error boundaries are React components that catch JavaScript errors anywhere in their child component tree, log these errors and display a fallback UI instead of the component tree that crashed. Error. Error. But you need to know that they do not handle errors in event handlers, asynchronous code, server-side rendering, and errors thrown in the error boundary itself. Code with Sloba. Consider the following code. We have a React boilerplate application running. There is a rotating React logo and some text below it. In our code, we can see that React logo is an external component. So let's see what happens if we get an error here, which is not being handled. Let's add a new component and call it error component just for simulation. This component will just throw a new error. Now, call this component in our logo component. We can see that after we reload our application, entire UI is broken and we receive errors in the console. Now, following the official React documentation, you should create a new class component. Create a new file and name it errorboundary.js We can name this class as errorboundary and extend react component. After that, add a constructor which received props as arguments. Call the super method with props as arguments to initialize our parent class. After that, we want to set a default state which has one property. This property is has error and the initial value is false. Once the error happens, we will catch it in the corresponding lifecycle method and update it. Using this flag, we can send feedback to the user that something is wrong. The name of that lifecycle method is get derived state from error, so define it as static, and this method receives error as an argument. The only thing that we need to do here is to update our has error flag once the error happens. If you want to log the errors to a monitoring service like a roll bar, you can do that in the component did catch method, as this method will receive error information. The only thing that is left to be done at this point is to create a render method, and inside of this method, we should check our has error property. If we caught the error and this variable is true, we should render a UI that notifies the user about it. In this case, I'll return the title with something went wrong text. If there was no error, we want to render the children's components from our properties. Now let's import this component in our main file. And let's wrap our logo component. As you can see, our logo is still failing, but at least the rest of the UI is working as expected and we are getting information back that something is wrong. By the way, this feature still can be implemented using hooks. Well, that's all for this React video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more React tutorials, click here.